This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Alex Bennett, The Ramble. It goes till midnight tonight. If you're anywhere in the world, in New York City, it is about 10 minutes past 10 o'clock at night. So you just adjust for that time. You can tell whether we're live where you are or whether you're listening to a replay of our program. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a guest tonight. And uh, I think we should spare not even one moment before getting to him. Okay, we always like to uh, go to this guy by just calling him cold. Because when we call him cold... We always get a funny answer. Okay, here we go. Start ringing, will you? There we go. There we go. Let's see if he picks up. I know he'll pick up. Try it again. I got nothing. I got nothing for you this week. <laughs> I fought my fought my fought. I didn't come up with shit. <laughs> Just a couple of shitty jokes that Jimmy Kimmel bought. But I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> you got nothing? I got nothing. I tried and I tried and I tried. I even ate fish sticks because it's good for the brains, but nothing happened. Oh, boy. Hello, Hello. Sir. Hello sir. Stephen Pearl. Just try to keep it colorful. Oh, what a fuck. I crown fell off my, not my front tooth, but uh, the one next to one of the front teeth. And uh, I got a show tonight, and I ain't got time to get anything put on. This crown has had it. I look like Merle, a guy named Merle. I look like Merle Pearl. You know, it's funny. I've got it in about a half hour or so after this i've got to do uh, a, a thing with uh, michael snyder that he does for us and he can't I remember him he, from he, the 80s a movie guy he more m- mostly does it on fridays but he said i got to do it today because i had a crown fall out and i've got to go to the dentist <laughs> tomorrow so uh, this must be the week of crowns falling out so i don't want to talk it to is you. man I, it's I, a bad, I bad day for jews of crowns man i don't want to talk to any of you fucking guys because now all my crowns are feeling loose you know? <laughs> oh look out be yeah. careful yeah. Yeah. yeah i just i don't feel like standing on the corner going make murphy great again <laughs> i'm proud to be from hayward <laughs> you know what's funny the older crowns you have are, are worth less money than the newer crowns because you didn't pay as much for them do you remember? Yeah, the, remember I, we used uh, to get a crown and it was dirt cheap, and now sure, that was the old days, man. And now a crown costs at least like fifteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred, oh, somewhere around in there. You know. Yeah, I know. I can I can get it. I can get it. A whole thing done for six hundred or seven hundred, but I got to be on a waiting list, and that may take a month. So I may have to walk around looking like Jethro for a month. Oh, how you doing? How are you? You know, well, well, Hitler didn't kill the Jews. He put them up in a big hotel, and they just complained because they didn't have a TV room. <laughs> How was they going to have a TV room? Because it was the 40s, but they complained anyway. <laughs> That's what I got to do until I get this group put back well, in. Well, no, what I'm <laughs> saying, gotta, yeah, all they got to do, I mean, if, it, if it's just the crown came loose and fell off, you, all you got to do is, yeah. is uh, uh, glue it back in. Well, that's the problem. This is an old crown. It's about, they said it's about the crack in half. It's fallen off before. And the last time they glue it on, and it keeps falling off again. So I got to get a new one because this one's had better days. And they show, well, there's a crack in it. And it's, it's going to shatter anyway. And if we glue it in, it's not going to stay in long. So uh, I just got to wait to get a new one. They got to file down this nub a little more and give me, give me a new toothpick so I look like I can read again. Yeah, well, in the meantime, they can give you a temporary. You know. I hate those temporaries because they even when they come off. Like I get whenever I get a temporary anything, it comes off like oh, in, in a had, day. I had a so. te- I had a temporary once that they put in, and I yeah. I didn't put in the new tooth for maybe a year, and that thing just was rock solid. And some people, he, the person, the dentist said to me, he said a lot of people just keep the temporary because some of them. I had, a, I had a temporary on a back tooth for five years. It just lasted forever, and then it came off. Yeah, and I got the real thing, which which didn't last five years. But uh, well, what, what you, you get to you get old and the teeth go. Well, I'll tell you what you can do as a temporary measure is buy a box of chiclets. And... <laughs> And then just put it in the place where the crown was, you know? 
Hey, all they had is the green ones. Well, I'll tell them I'm from England. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I think actually, Buddy on um, Buddy Holly did a tour of Australia in 1958, and on the last night of it, I believe two two caps were knocked out of his his uh, his teeth from horseplay backstage. So he had they actually got like chiclets and put them in that was on his the, mouth for that the, one show. That was on that was on the Ed Sullivan show. No, in the movie it was on the Ed Sullivan show. In real life, it happened in Australia. It didn't oh. have it on the Ed Sullivan show. Oh, okay. But they, he, they said he just the people in the audience said he looked funny, and they was and they admitted it was the worst show they ever did because well, well, he was just freaking out because he had them with chiclets on his mouth. Buddy Holly, oh, my God. Buddy Holly always looked kind of weird anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, how, yeah. Do, how do you know whether they're chiclets or not, or just the teeth he had? Yeah, it might be that Texas inbreeding. You never know. You sorry, never sorry know. Texas, and I'm glad you won the World Series. God bless you. Fuck L.A. <laughs> L.A.'s not doing too good this week. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So you got your you got your tail of woe. So, did, so when are you going to the dentist on this one? Uh, I'm waiting for the call. So uh, it's not going to happen today, and I got a show tonight. So anyway, so anybody who comes to the show tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to riff on it probably for the whole time. I'll be, oh, there, I'm Merle Pearl. Glad to, take, glad to see you. Yeah, um, I don't want to tell you, me and my sister Lulu Bell are expecting our 19th big-headed cross-eyed bundle of joy. So yeah. I'll do something like that. I don't know. Yeah, well, you, uh, you, you know, you, uh, you, it, it's, uh, you need to, to get it done so uh, what the hell and it's it is what know, it is it I'm, is hey i'm not is. dying yet and i'm not in afghanistan so what the fuck you know yeah. i got a little chip in my mouth so yeah. i'll deal with it i get i guess and, uh, well, you know I'll, I'll you walk know, around going anybody got any mess i need mess man come on give me mess you know the thing is you can get yourself good health insurance you know for a couple hundred bucks a month right but uh-huh. yep. but you can't get good dental insurance like if no, you have I, some I kind have of dental insurance, yeah. yeah, I have a dental insurance plan as part of my wife's plan at her job, and that only pays up to fifteen hundred dollars a year. You know, it's uh, nothing. I, I, it's yeah. nothing. Yeah. It is. It is. I've been very lucky until this thing here because I haven't needed a lot of work except fillings, and where I go, I get my fillings for nothing. So uh, I just got to wait for the. Wait for the crown to get the call, but until then, I'll just deal with it. So, well, well, I have two. <laughs> I can't show my face in public. My God, I'm not an animal. I'm not an animal. I have two implants. You know, uh-huh. I got, oh, they, they work. Well, they work great. You know, but oh. here's here, to begin with. Let me let me say that first of all, <laughs> the reason I had to get the implants was because the old root canals went bad. They don't tell uh-huh. you that when they were giving you root canals that someday this could go bad on you, you know. Uh-huh. So you get a fractured tooth, you get a lot of different things. So I had two two implants. The implants right, right. are anywhere from five to six grand a piece. Oh, they have jumping potatoes. Count me out. Now, in a like way, I could buy in, with that. In a way, let's say let's say you're going to go in. You got a bad tooth. You're going to go get a, um, a root canal. And then you're going to get a crown for it. So the root canal is going to be this is these are New York prices, fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred bucks. Okay, uh-huh. and then you're going to get the uh, the crown, and that's going to be another fifteen to eighteen hundred. So if you think about it, you pay another fifteen hundred, you get a permanent tooth that's in there forever. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, really, it, in a way, maybe it's uh-huh. cheaper. I don't know. You know, I, 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 it's always something. Jesus, the ivory, these little white squares cost you so much money. Yep. And if yep. one little white square goes missing, it look like you're inbred. Well, oh boy. Yeah, I, I, luckily, all my bad teeth, all the ones that I have problems with, are not in the front. Okay, they're all yeah, in they, the, the bad one should be in the back. The brown one should yeah. be in the back. And if you lose one in the back, maybe you don't even get a crown. You just say fuck it, yeah, because nobody's. Yeah, yeah, I'm missing one in the back. I said fuck it. Well, here's what I here's what I told my dentist because I've got I have a tooth that's been loose for years, right? So it gets a little infected and does things like that. Because eventually that tooth's got to go. I said, okay. She says, so you can get an implant. I said, well, suppose I don't want an implant. Suppose we just pull the tooth. And then I get one of those, like when I got the implants before, they, I have to go to the dentist, and one of the other costs is 750 bucks for a temporary tooth that you just kind of push in there and clip on. It just clips in. Oh, it's like, it's like, a, fa- it's like oh, a false tooth. I said, what if, yeah. I, what if I didn't get the implant, but I got the false tooth? And anytime I want the implant, mm-hmm. it's keeping the space open 
far enough that they can do the implant without any problem. And she said, those yep. things those things will last a couple of years. She said, if every couple of years you got to spend 750 bucks to get a new one, what the hell? But if you don't mind using that. And what I found when I got the implant and I had that false tooth, that when it finally came time to get the implant, I was really very happy with that false tooth every morning. You just wake up, well, there you, you, go. you take it out of this little box, you clip it into your mouth, and for the rest of the day it's there and you don't feel it. You know, it doesn't, it's not, yeah. you know, so... These these are all the options, but the fact is that dentistry is so fucking <clears throat> expensive that, you better believe it. that why uh, medical care doesn't cover or you can't buy really full dental care. I know. I know. It sucks. Right. It totally sucks. Hey, totally, totally sucks. You, we have an appendicitis attack. That's covered, thank God. But like, a tooth goes bad, and I'm on, you're on your own, if son. I, if I have a bad tooth and I have to have it pulled and get an implant... That's going to cost five thousand dollars. If I get cancer, if I get cancer, it's going to cost the insurance company hundreds of thousands of dollars. So why don't I get? Why don't I get? Ins- why don't they have uh, dental insurance? You know? I don't know, but it sounds like a good uh, bit for an observational comic. If I can get operated on for nothing. How come I can't get a filling? Who are these people? I smell a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call it the sun? Who's its father? Who are these people? Who are these people anyway? Uh, so Why I, do they call them gums? You can't chew them, but even if you could, where would you put your teeth? Who are uh, these people? Uh, yeah. Oh, I had a Seinfeld attack. Sorry, I'm okay now. Yeah, yeah. You, you get those every now and then, and then you can't stop. It happens now and then, yes. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> It affects everything except my bank account. I'll tell you, though, I watched him. He had a special on uh, Netflix uh, called Jerry Before Seinfeld. And what he did uh, is he it, it was it, he did kind of a history of his life when, as he was growing up and all of that uh, with a certain little documentary pieces in there. But it was basically him doing his act. But what he was doing were all the pe- bits he had created before Seinfeld that he, uh, that he okay. did in stand-up. And, you know, I watched him, and I just said, this, this guy was one of the greatest stand-ups of all time. Oh, I mean, he was solid, man. He's the only solid stand-up. I mean, just amazing stand-up. Yep. And, he was and, safe as milk, but he did the job. Well, he he wasn't dirty. And that, nope. that's what everybody he was... He set out to be clean yeah. and just, you know, reach across the board, and he did it. Now, let's look at his TV show for a second. Oh, I love it. It was the dirtiest TV show in the history of television up to that point. <laughs> Am I right? It was nothing like his act. It was totally abstract. It was like a cartoon. It was like, you know, a slightly drier version of the Abbott Costello TV show. And they he'd did be the first to admit episode. that. They had, it was just insane. It was nothing like his act at all. A whole episode of, about a masturbation contest. You know, <laughs> something he <laughs> would he'd never talk about at that, he, that time. He would never ever. talk about that in never. his act. Yeah. You know. That 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 was uh, at the Hamalak Hotel. He won't be talking about according that. According to Larry David, who wrote that episode, um, it, it, he 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 and f- a couple of friends actually had that contest. I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> he said we decided to see how long we could go without masturbating. <laughs> And so, you know, when it came to doing a TV show, he figured out a way to do it. I mean, they never say masturbate in the show. Exactly, but although, yeah, they although, did it. Yeah, and they did they it. They got it on network TV on prime time. They made it work. God are bless you, them. Are you still master of your domain? You know, that was the way they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Kramer comes in with the money. I'm out. I'm, it was like five minutes after they started. <laughs> I'm out. <Yeah. laughs> I just got, I'm out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Yeah. but uh, Very funny show. Yeah. Uh, it was a great show. Great show. They made history. You history, know, I tell you. You know, my wife loves Larry David's show, right? Curb Your Enthusiasm, mm-hmm. which is uh, terrific. But she loves it, and yet she will not watch Seinfeld. She, oh, really? That's weird. She says, I don't like, like kind of it because it, it has a laugh track. I said, it doesn't have a laugh uh-huh. track. I said, that's an actual... You know, that's an actual audience. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like Petticoat Junction. There was a real audience there. I mean, I might agree with her to this point that I think maybe they sweetened it a little in post, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, but it, but they didn't put <clears throat>, laughs where they weren't getting laughs. And she won't believe me on that one. 
And then uh, same thing with like Big Bang Theory or any of the Chuck Lorre shows. She says she won't she won't watch them because of the laugh track. And uh, finally, uh-huh. I showed her in uh, uh, you know at the end of the show, Chuck Lorre always writes these things called vanity cards in which he makes yeah, some kind sure. of political statement or whatever, and they go on really fast. You got to f- yeah. fast. F- you have to freeze it to read. You have to freeze it to read it. And one of them yeah. was a picture of the studio audience that said, for all those people that think we use a laugh track, you know. Uh-huh. And I showed it to her, and she says, I don't care. I don't like the laughter. And I'm going, that's bullshit. <laughs> that <was> nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, some yeah. some shows need an audi- a live studio audience, and others don't. Yeah. And I exactly. said, you know, you don't mind it when you uh, when you see a Netflix special with Jerry Seinfeld on stage doing an act before a studio audience. That doesn't seem sure. to bother you, uh-huh. uh, you know. So That's I, true. I could I could never understand that theory of hers, but she will not watch Seinfeld. And I, ah, could, you know, okay. That's and, weird. and so all references that I could make in this household that go back to Seinfeld, I can't. You know, I can't say to her. Well, I'm not gay, but that's not anything. That's not that there's anything wrong with that, you know. And you and yeah. I would laugh because we know the Seinfeld episode exactly. Uh, yeah, and and I I just I don't understand. And I said you love Larry David, yet you won't watch the one thing he created that is maybe <laughs> yeah, the, that's good. Yeah. the greatest that's sitcom in history, you know. So, yep. Her house, her rules. What are you gonna do? If you catch you watching your sci-fi, you're gonna be horse with boy. Exactly. Exactly. You better not watch that. We there's a latent image of Kramer on the screen. You've been watching Seinfeld. So what toilet are you playing tonight, did you say? What toilet? I've been speaking of toilets, I'm in San Jose. Funny you should bring that up. But I always feel dirty when I drive back from San Jose for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm at the improv in San Jose. Uncle Bud's house of no eye contact and off. Yeah. Oh, 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 so really? I'll be doing He's... something there with uh, one less tooth in my mouth and uh, rock and roll. He still has an improv there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he goes there much, but uh, it's still there. So somebody's hiring me for a few shekels, and I said, okay, I'll do that. In fact, you, don't, you don't hear much about... Uh, Bud Friedman very often now. Uh, no, I think he had, somebody said he wrote a book and had a big press party about it, but I didn't hear much about it. So it's my life and improv by Bud Friedman. Uh, uh, introduction by Roy Cohn. I don't know. But, Bud Friedman uh, is... He's still there. Let's just tell people. He's a guy who owned the improv on in, uh, yeah. in, in Los Angeles. In New York, his wife got it as part of the... Uh, what do you call it? The, the, the uh, divorce... Okay. Oh, the, the settlement. Yeah. yeah, she got the new. She got the, the improv East. He got the improv West. Yeah, and and he and he then he got he got very big in television because television yep. cable was looking for cheap stuff to do, and he had the cheapest idea of all. Why don't we just you know do a night at the improv yeah. and we have a bunch of comics come up and they don't work for exactly. much there money. You go. And uh, they'll they'll do it for the exposure, not that exposure doesn't give you pneumonia. And da 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 da. da. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so he was uh, at A and E, uh, the yep. the the biggest show, the only show, the only original show on uh, on A and E. And somebody once said That's that right. isn't it interesting when you watch A and E, the two most pervasive people that you see on A and E are Bud Freeman and Hitler. There you go. <laughs> and Bud's wearing a monocle. Who's serving who? I ask you because it seemed like A and E. Never stopped running documentaries on Hitler. Oh, it was Hitler, Bud, Hitler, Bud, Hitler, Hitler Bud, Hitler, 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 Bud, Hitler, Bud, Hitler, Bud, Hitler. Yeah. So I, I yeah, but I, you don't hear about Bud Friedman that much anymore. You know. So. Well, I think he's like 107, and the uh, I don't know if he has anything to do with the improvs anymore. He might have sold them, and I don't know what the deal is. I, I have no idea. I'm waking his joint for a few seconds. I'll come home and they, it'll be forgotten quickly. Yes, yes, and that we. How much? How often do you work per month? Uh, about one third of a time, but <laughs> one third of one time. Uh several. Let's just say several times a month. Well, yeah, and you used to work the, like the rest is, You used to work like four nights oh, a week. Oh, nineteen days a week. I used to pearl mania was sweeping the nation, but then it died out. Yeah, it died out when that bastard Justin Bieber hit the charts. He ruined me. Yeah, and the, you know what it is though. What it really is is that uh, uh, you're not working as much because it's just uh, it, the business isn't there. What they want to do is hire these these names, you know, or people they feel are the new comics. 
I, I don't even know who, what the think, names okay, are anymore. You, you, Whatever you, the names are, I don't know what they are. <laughs> okay, you look. The people, the, the, yeah, okay. You know, you would think that, you, you know, you have problems because, oh, well, you never made it that big, right, on the, on the circuit. And, and But other people who did were, are doing just fine. Bobby Slayton uh-huh. isn't working. You know, well, I talked to Bobby. He's always, yeah. Every time I see him on Facebook, here I am in New York eating a pizza. Here I am in Wyoming yeah, eating a pizza. Yeah, he, you know, he's doing he's, that. He's traveling. He's, he's going tra- somewhere. He's traveling, but he's not working. And part of that well, was weird. for a while he didn't work because he wanted to take some time off. But when he wants yeah. to go back to work, they don't want to pay him decent money that he's used to. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I mean, they, they go, oh, we can get this new comic who's younger and he says, "If you're not exactly, you yeah. work, yeah." yeah. And the, it's just it, it's it's weird because like, well, the work is there, but they're still paying 1985 prices. Yeah, but my, my rent is more than it was in 1985. Well, no, if you want to, so if you want to, if, if you want to work for the wages, you know that a 22 year old is willing to accept, and you're Bobby Slayton, who has been making a lot of money on the road. Yeah, uh, it just you know it it. And he said, "said the other thing is, is that, that uh, um, older people aren't going to the clubs anymore. You know uh-huh. that it's younger people. Uh, he said it's just the whole the whole bottom has fallen out of the comedy club business. Oh, big time! I just I don't want to travel anymore. I've been around the world a bunch of times. I, I'll be happy if I never get on another plane for the rest of my life. I like being here, and I'm just you know I work locally, and when there's gigs and." The Don is semi-retired, but I mean, you know, I, I just, I, I couldn't, I don't care what the money is. I couldn't live on the road anymore. That's just the same. Well, of course, you know, look at a guy God. like Slayton worked, lived on the road for what? 30 years, 35 years. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You know, oh my God. But, but he was making big bucks working these clubs. Yeah. And so yeah, it was sure. worth it for him to do it, but it's not worth it to him any longer. You know? No. Nah, he was a hot young upstart now. Now he's an old Jew. <laughs> and still one of the funniest comedians alive oh without a doubt yep yep even having a dead wife has made him even funnier it's almost worth it he actually got material out of that which is is yeah amazing and i said you know it's catharsis he says yeah but it's also funny he said people laugh at it It, yep yeah it's like singing a blues song you're singing about your troubles and you feel better so you know it's it's kind of like that so yeah yeah. it's it's but yeah of course you get material out of real life too i'm gonna i'm gonna riff on uh this little tooth hole in my mouth here tonight i got a bunch of riffs on it the the problem was that that all his career he did nothing but kid do jokes at the expense of his wife yeah you know my wife my wife my what are you gonna do now tough guy Ah. when she died she he said there goes one third of my act you know, yeah. Uh, and I said, no, it doesn't have to happen that way. I said, talk about it. You know. Yep. And he found humor in it, and uh, people yep. seem to really, really like it. But the problem is that he has to be playing to an older audience because a younger audience doesn't understand somebody dying. You know. That's yeah. And, and That's the com- and the humor that might go along with that. And so, I mean, they, they, these clubs are just trying to play to get the youngest audience possible. Who oh, was. it's a it's a young person's game, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, and there's older people who are working, and there's always cruise ships and stuff like that. I oh, I get the shivers just I, talking I, I about that. I can't think but, of uh, any reason why I would go to a comedy club. To tell you the goddamn truth, you know what? I have to get dressed, uh, and I have to. I have to stay up past nine thirty. You know, I mean, a lot of these things. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, it, it takes a lot. Of, if I don't have a gig. It takes a lot to get me out of the house at night. Unless yeah. I'm calling one of the cats in, but <laughs> I just don't like leaving the house, man. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I like it here. I'm old. I'm going to be sixty-two in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but I like being home where my stuff is, where my wife is, where my cats are. Yeah, where your cats are. Yeah. Uh, I gotta be where the cats. It's a cat house here. I tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So you're mar- you're married, or are you? Do you call it marriage just to be? It's whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, it's what yeah, it is. It's a fine union. It, it, we drive each other crazy. Like my parents later on. It's like she's in her room doing her watching her videos. I'm in my room watching my videos. Or occasionally we see each other. Yeah, that's that's what what it becomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's been a, that's what my parents did, and that's what we're doing now. You know, I want to have sex. How about two Thursdays from now? Okay, I got five minutes. Okay, I got to go back. And, and if you 
watching Bracken's World. I get back to you. If you thought that the, the reason you get married is because it's to the person ultimately you love more than anybody that you ever knew in your life, and that you're never going to argue with them, well, forget yeah, that one. Exactly. Forget that one. Get used to arguing. Yeah. Because you're what you're doing is you're fighting for turf. You know. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> I take this. I, take, I get the computer. You get the TV. I don't watch the TV anyway. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, we've we, we've we've come to the end of yet another wonderful. Oh my God! Uh, the minutes seem to fly. Ed playing shenanigans. Edition of uh, of of uh, Stephen Pearl. Why don't we do this again in a couple of weeks? Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Give me a day. I'll make it possible. I'll, I'll, I'll put a blank on my totally busy calendar. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the funniest people I know, Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. And thanks for not saying Bobby Slade. Thank you so much. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our good friend, Stephen Pearl. And we like talking to him every now and then. And we'll hear from him in another couple of weeks. Boy, as I stumble over my words. Hey, how are you? I, I'm drinking reg regular coffee tonight because I'm... I'm uh, tired. I don't know why. I uh, I slept pretty much okay last night, except I keep waking up a lot, uh, and, and it's not from uh, it's not from sleep apnea. I don't. Uh, I'm not snoring and then wake myself up. It's just I uh, I, I get up around I don't know seven thirty every morning and say, Hey, wait a minute! I still got another four hours to sleep here, and then I go back to sleep. Anyway, it's uh, time for us to uh, check in with the citizens panel, and that would mean that I have to turn on Skype. And so I will now turn it on. Skype is officially online, okay? So if you want to call me and talk, last night we had, what, uh, 11 people with me. Uh, so let me turn this on, too, because girlfriend will be very mad if I don't turn the on-the-air sign on. Anyway, uh, we had... Uh, Gee, we had a lot of people last night, just a lot of them. So uh, I, uh, uh, we had about 11 people with me. And I find that uh, anything over nine plus me is, becomes very un, hard to manage. It, but, you know, don't, don't let that hold you back. Give me a call. We would love to hear from you. Uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, go over to gabnet.net. Over the right-hand side of the page tells you everything you need to know about becoming part of the Citizens Panel. And it even has a thing that once you install Skype on your machine, you turn on Skype and then you click on this little icon and it will automatically dial, dial us up. Uh, our Skype ID is uh, um, uh, Gabnet Live. Okay, Gabnet Live is our Skype uh, ID. Uh, and you call that, and we're uh, we're here, and you, we'll talk to you, and you can talk to other people, and you can argue about stuff, and so on. And uh, all we do now is sit around twiddling our thumbs, waiting for people to call. Uh, so let me not sit here twiddling my thumbs a lot. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Start calling, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you. What did I see? There were a couple of items uh, in the news today. But you see, I don't want to get into them until I've got the citizens panel, mainly because if I if I do uh, uh, start in, then I don't get to finish what I'm saying because somebody calls and you know whatever. So I'm sitting here waiting for you to call, and uh, I usually at the beginning have to stall a little bit and do a little tap dance. Last night I didn't think we were going to get anybody. By the end of the show, as I say, we had so many people who didn't know what to do with it. So. Um, give us a call, all right? Uh, it's uh, Gabnet Live if you have Skype. And if you don't have uh, uh, Skype, you just want to do it on the telephone, there's a telephone number at gabnet.net on the right-hand side of the page uh, that you can call and just join us by telephone. The only problem with calling by phone, and uh, some people who do call regularly by phone know that this is a problem, is it's harder for you to get space to talk because I let people when they want to talk raise their hand then I know they have something to say when you're on the phone all I get is a picture of a telephone 
And I can't tell when you want to jump in, so people have to kind of fight for space uh, if they're using the phone. So we prefer that you use Skype, plus the fact that Skype, the, the audio on Skype is much better than uh, on almost any other medium we can name. Certainly it's better than the phones. I just was looking to see if our, a lot, if, if our um, lines are open, and they are open. Um, I... Um, the only thing that scares me is today I, I signed on to uh, uh, to Skype and it said to me, uh, "Oh, hey, uh, Skype, uh, yeah, you, uh, um, uh, we have a new upgrade uh, here. Upgrade to it." So I upgraded, which I do with great trepidation because I don't know what surprises are in store with the new upgrade. So um, I, if you're trying to call me and you're not getting me, then you got to let me know somehow. I don't know how you would do that. Uh, I guess you could go online and do it in the chat on the on the uh, Facebook Live, but I'm not hearing from anybody. Is it working? Is it is it, you know this is getting to worry me now. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh boy. Let me let me try something here. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, somebody is calling. Okay. All right. Here comes here comes Phil. Thank God for hey, Phil. Thank God. Out of sync, Phil. Thank for God for you, Phil. Let me get, <laughs> let me get rid of this uh, little uh, this little well, uh, logo here. Uh, I walked my ass off today. What do you mean you walk your ass off today? Uh, here's my Disney uh, pass. They, they took us to the uh, Disney uh, Animal Kingdom, Disney World. Uh, they, they said, oh, we've got a surprise. So we get there at 5 o'clock, uh, you know, your time, my yeah. time, and uh, uh, we walk into the park, and uh, the first ride is this Avatar. Two and a half hour wait. So I said, I'm not waiting for a ride. Matter of fact, I don't even like going on rides. Yeah. So I was, you know, we, there's about 50 people. It was about five of us in our loop. And we started walking around and, you know, and we're looking at stuff. Uh, but I, I was so glad to be back on the bus and brought back to the hotel. You have no idea. Well, uh, you know, I, all it, the, I don't know if as an adult uh, I could do the stuff at Disney because you have to wait in those lines to get was, on something. Hey, hours. And, you know, there was all of these families. They were all exasperated. They, their kids are crying. You could see that the parents were at the end of their rope, and they were probably spending $1,000 to do this. I think this little card was... Wait, 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 you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of breaking up on us because your yeah. bandwidth uh, uh, in your uh, hotel room sucks. Uh, and nobody else is calling. And this is sucks. what I don't get. Hey, I just discovered... But, but, Wait a minute. Hold on I a second. Can't. Hold on a second. Is there any? Do you, are you using? You're using a, a, a notebook to do this with? Are you? Uh, doing? No, but let me let me sign off and sign in for more bandwidth. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. You know how to do it right. more bandwidth. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. Okay. So right. he's he's go, he's going uh, to um, he's going to do that. Uh, let okay. Me, how the hell? Yeah. He signs out. Okay. Nobody else is calling. Now I need, uh, you know, and and Mike tried to call, and Mike uh, apparently was, he's always challenged, and then he tries over and over again, but I guess it's not happening. What is it going to be tonight? One of these nights, uh, you know. I, I was thinking about it tonight before I came on. How we like to think this technology is perfected, and it really isn't. You know, you'd like to think it's really smooth and really works well. Nah, nah, you know. But anyway, so I'm waiting for Phil to call back, and I wish somebody else would call so I can have somebody else to talk to. I know we won't have Jeff tonight because he said he's traveling. Um, and uh, let's see here. Who else won't we have tonight? Uh, that's about it. You know, so where are the rest of you? Uh, and John Rockwell, where have you been? We haven't heard from John Rockwell in, gee, the longest time. Anyway, hmm. Hmm. So anyway, I'm having coffee to keep me awake tonight, and uh, I, I, I would keep you awake too, but unfortunately, we don't have anybody to keep you awake with. 
This is really strange that I'm not getting that many people calling. Wow, that's strange. Okay, well, everything else is working. The audio is going out. The video is going out. Uh, and uh, it all seems to be working. So uh, I just don't know what the problem is, folks. But uh, uh, give us a call. Uh, we are GabNet Live. And you see, now we don't even get uh, we don't even get Phil calling us back. What is this? I thought he's he was going to get more bandwidth. What's he doing? Going down the hall and borrowing it? Uh, <laughs> no. You know, sometimes when you go book into a hotel, you would like to think that they say we have Wi-Fi. It's good in every room. But usually what they have is like one, you know, Wi-Fi in the center of the hallway or something. And then everybody's room is supposed to get that one signal. And it's not, if, you, if you're right near where the, uh, where the router is, you'll get a good signal. But if you're not near where there's a router, uh, you're going to, you know, you're going to start suffering some, uh, some lagging and problems and so on. Anyway, um, uh, I, this is getting very frustrating. Oh, Jeff Stein is signing on. Huh. I wonder where he... I thought he said he was going out of town. Wait a minute. Let me ask him. Hey. Uh, hello, Jeff. How are you? Well, how'd that work? Yeah. I thought you were going to be out of town today. I am. I'm in uh, Atlanta right now. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And we're waiting for Phil to call it. So you, you have a pretty good signal. You look like your bandwidth's okay. Yeah, I can't understand because when I first put it on yeah. earlier... Yeah. I was having all kinds of problems. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're not having problems now. You know. I know. I moved to another room. <laughs> well, that's probably the reason. Yeah, it could be. You know, it's usually most people, when they have uh, Wi-Fi put in their house, it's put into one room. And, and you've got to be able to get it all over the house, and that's impossible. So what I've done is I literally run Ethernet hey. to other parts of the house. Yes, uh, Phil. You there? Yeah, we're here. Show us your picture now. Phil? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Oh, hello, hello, Phil. I don't hear anything. You don't hear anything? Well, we hear you. Yeah. This might be a better show. Oh, this is going to be one of those nightmares tonight. This, you know. <laughs> and that, now he can't hear. I don't hear anything. He, well, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. We can, do I have to write a sign and put it up or something uh, saying we can see. hear you? Let me see here. Let me type and write this on the post-it note here. Uh, we can, no, I don't have any audio. Uh, I'm going to have to call you back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, no, but he's going to hang up, isn't he? See, see, Phil? We See, we can hear you. You see that? Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know whether he sees it or not. I don't know. I just okay, Phil. All right. Get the headphones up all the way. Call us back. <laughs> Can't hear it. Yeah. What's this? Somebody said uh, Rhonda Justin to Alex Bennett. Just give us the call-in number. Oh well, I'll give you the call-in number. If you don't want to use Skype, uh, we will accept phone calls. Uh, let me. Uh, Phil's constantly having problems there. The phone number is three four seven. I can't hear you. Okay, then let hang me up. sign in again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. That's well, wait a minute. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. If, to the person who's listening, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, the number is at the bottom of the screen, which is three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. I don't even know why I had to go to the page to go look it up since it's right on the screen. Also, the uh, Gabnet Live is there, too. Well, here's somebody calling. Here we go. Is this you, Rhonda? Hello? Is this you, Rhonda? Hey. Who is this? No, I'm not, I'm not Rhonda, but I, I, I used her phone because I'm watching you on my phone. Yeah. And then I figured out, okay, in little teeny words, because I'm looking at a phone, it says, there you are. But... Uh, yeah, anyway, turn, turn down, turn yeah, down, turn down. Uh, turn down. You know, hey, hey, hey. Landline, man. Can, can you Landlines hit, work. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Okay, then, then would you do me a favor and turn down the audio on the feed you're watching? 
Absolutely. Okay. It's down. Okay, because it was coming back. Well, who is this? What's your name? Uh, my name's Larry. Hi, Hello. Larry. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm out in California in Sacramento in the great state of Governor Moonbeam, but, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of a... I'm I'm kind of a, a lefty, but not, you know. I like I believe like if everybody's on a 747 with a 350,000 pound counterweight, and the pilot tells everybody to go to the left side, you know we're going to crash. They tell them to go to the right side, we're going to crash. So I'm always kind of standing in line. You're basically and, you're standing in the aisle. <laughs> yeah, and you you know you you make your decisions that way. If you got to go a little left, a little right, you know, but you know. Do it with a little morality, a little uh, conservatism, a little bit of uh, all those things that we that you know you and I are about the same age. Yeah. Uh, come up with that kind of philosophy. You say, wait, wait, we, wait a minute. Now let me get your name again. What is it again? It's Larry. 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 Uh, yep. You say we're we're pretty much the same age. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I I think so. I was born in '51. Oh well, then we're not anywhere nearly the same age. Well, I don't know how old you. Maybe are you younger or older? I can't tell. Oh, from this a, little a, a, t- a tad older. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. but you know, we get it. And and the problem I see. Yeah. With my own kids, my own family, my cousins yeah. are younger. It's like uh, three generations. You got X Gen. You got the uh, the I don't know what they call them. There's a, our generation, the X Gen. I guess the Millenniums. Yeah. And, yeah. We're dealing in, in it's such a time where, uh, you know, people are so unaware. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I served in Vietnam, and people talk to me about it to this day. I still shake my hand. I said, you still don't get it, mm-hmm. all the history. Uh, and, and now, you know, you got this guy, and he's up in North Vietnam, I mean, sorry, North Korea, and he's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. And you got a president that's like, well, let's just take him out. You know, that's our solution. That'll fix it all. That'll take all the heat off me, by the way. Yeah. And then Judge, you know, the good old Roy Moore and his deal tonight. I mean, it's... Well, the, the, what's interesting is... Uh, uh, okay, remember, uh, to begin with, Larry, that you're not just on with me. You're also on with Jeff. And are you there, Phil? No, uh, I, I just have Phil's no. picture. Uh, so you're on with other people as well. So remember okay. that, Okay. It isn't yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, it isn't well, like I, a normal. I haven't, I haven't sworn yet. Have no, I? no, no. You can, hey, Alex. <laughs> who who is this? It's Dave Lerman. You know, I was listening to you on the very last day when you were on the quake in San Francisco with Bob Rubin, Jeremy Kramer, Linda Hill. Do you remember? Uh, all these people were calling in. It was sort of like an alternative station. You remember that? Where was this? Your last day on the quake. On the, San Francisco. on the quake. What, did you lose track yeah, of me once I left? Yeah, your contract, they changed managers, and, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, oh, Alex, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And you're like, I'm not going nowhere. I have a contract. And you used to say, Mr. Laverne, he's a Benin attorney. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I uh, did you <laughs> What a lose... great guest, Steve Pearl. Wait a minute. Was, hold on a second. Did you, did you lose track of me after that point? No, of course not. I keep my oh, finger on the oh, pulse you, of radio you, and you, pop culture. You followed me to Live 105 then? Of course. Oh, okay. All right. You are a radio pioneer, an icon, a Hall of Famer, one of the best All in the right, business. Well, uh, you know, no, I used to he be a big back, shot. He goes back to uh, 101 FM when they were doing quad broadcasts. Yeah. <laughs> two, two stereo taping. One day the tubes in the radio. And one out of Berkeley and one out of San Francisco. Wait a minute, everybody, one at a time. One at a time now. What, Sorry. We, yeah. Uh, this Larry. That was Larry saying the Larry. quad broadcasting. Yes, Larry. What were you going to say? I was just saying, man, K101, when they did a quad broadcast, the first four tracks, and I had a four-track TIAC, and he goes way back to those days where FM was underground and all that stuff, you know. It was, it was a very cool time. You know, people got the well, point across. Uh, yeah, but, you know, that was then and this is now. And uh, yeah. now I'm sitting here on yeah. the Internet with five people listening to me. And, uh, you know. Uh, so, hey, uh, we uh, gotta get uh, those, Alex. we got to get those, those, things, those people to come up. Okay, now we, now we have other people here as well. Now, who's the guy that just joined us? So your name is? Dave. Dave. Okay, so it's Dave I'm and it's Larry. Okay. Hi. All right. And uh, we have Phil. Are you, can you, are you okay now, Phil? 
Yeah, I uh, couldn't sign into the faster internet for some reason, so I'm I'm still on that. Uh, uh, Try nine one. volt. Try nine <laughs> volts, yeah. And, and we have yeah. Mike here. Jeff and we have, work better. Yeah, and we have Jeff as well. And because you two guys are uh, calling on the phone, uh, you're going to have to kind of you know judge when to jump in and say stuff and so on because I can't see you. So these guys are used. Hey, to, Alex. Yes. Yeah, uh, so I, uh, I was bringing up about your last day on the quake, oh, well. and you had assembled this talent pool of comedians, and your rapport with Stephen Pearl. You know, Stephen Pearl was one of the outlaws of comedy with Sam Kinison. I don't know if you knew that, but I, you remember, Greg, I think their sponsor was Rooster T. Feathers in, like, Sunny Val. Remember that? Well, wait, they were yeah. one of our advertisers. Well, you had tons of advertisers. You were, you were the hottest thing going in radio. Uh, I was going to the UC Berkeley back then. Yes, I was. F- F- Phil, F- uh, yeah, Phil will uh, uh, go along with that. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to live in the past. You know. Okay, let's live in the present. All right, let's talk uh, because I was really, really intrigued by your interview with Stephen Pearl, uh, and and I kind of wanted to get your feeling on the, the state of comedy today. Uh, and uh, are there any yeah. stand-ups out there that you like? Yeah, I think you know, uh, I, mean, I, I think the, be, the best out there, and everybody should go see him, is Louis C.K. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, they're trying. Uh, this is Larry. Uh, yeah. They're trying to get Louis now on uh, some kind of rape charge. Now. Yes. So yes. you know, everybody's going after that. Well, it isn't a rape. It the, isn't. It isn't the, a rape charge. Liberal movie stars, you know. And, and it isn't. It isn't. A, it isn't a rape charge. It's uh, a charge of pulling his penis out. Oh, okay. Well, all right. It'd be like indecent what? exposure. I don't know yeah. what the what the the drive is by these people. Okay, to show their uh, penises. You know, I mean. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, disgusted or uh, afraid to show people my penises, but quite frankly, I don't show my penis to just anybody, you know? Well, Pee, Pee- Wee Herman, Look, and then he came back bigger than no, ever. Pee- Wee Herman, well, I don't know no, about Pee- Wee Herman ever, was just found off. Back. A Pee- Wee yeah, Herman was found jerking off in a, uh, a porno Florida theater. Florida adult cinema. And if you can't jerk off in a porno theater, where can right. you jerk off? Uh, I, I suppose. <laughs> you, know, you know why he came, came back bigger than ever? Yeah. Because he was rubbing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kept rubbing <laughs> it, and he came back bigger than ever. Very good, Phil. Uh, hey, Pete. Hey, bada boom. Pete. Got a question for Pete. Pete? Are you there, Pete? Pete? Who's Pete? Yeah. Oh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's running your board, Alex? Nobody's running my board. Oh, oh you're running your own board. I'm running Sorry, I'm everything here. I'm on the internet. I'm, I'm running the video. Where are you based out of now, Alex? New York. I'll be Pete tonight. Out of New York. Wow. Yeah. New York. Wait a um, minute. Hold on a second. You'll... Tim, uh, hold on, guys. Hold it. Tim, you there? Yeah, I'll be Pete tonight. You'll be Pete tonight. Okay, you can be yep, Pete. Cool. No, hey, Tim. Uh, there's Larry and the other guy. The other guy is Dave. Mo, Dave. Larry, and Curly. So did you mean? Did you Larry? Did you mean Dave? What? No, I'm Larry. But no, if no, you no, want to be no, Dave, no. I can be you, Dave. But, I can be Joe. No, just no but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? why is, come on. Oh, is, I'm getting. A, I'm getting a headache yeah, with I'm this here. thing. <laughs> yes. It, hey, Alex. Yes. Hey, do you ever see uh, a comeback of terrestrial radio? No, see a Abs- podcasting absolutely stuff. not. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. How long do you see, you know, these guys, uh, rest in peace, Jay Thomas, but, you know, we're losing a lot of the old old school guys. I mean, you're, you're one of the last bastions of great broadcasting that's left out there. Uh, um, you know, I'm losing it, again. It, it, I, I need to get that faster internet. Okay, go I'm get a faster back. internet. Okay, call back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Please call back. So, Help me Alex, here. What? Uh, that's okay. So, uh, Alex. So, w- w- what? What? What do you see as the next big thing? What do you think is the direction? Because these young guys, they they can't even uh, well, compare my, my, with you. You my, may have five yeah. people yeah, listening, yeah, yeah. but you still are broadcasting like you're broadcasting to a million. Yeah. It's let fantastic. me. Let me. Let, well, I'm used to doing that. Uh, l- let me just say that I think the next big thing, and this is, you can take this to the bank. In fact, invest okay. in it is Morse code. <laughs> You're dating Be- yourself, Alex. Because once once Trump bombs us back to the Stone Age, that's all we're <laughs> going to have left. 
Okay. Yes, I, I, Mark. I agree Mark, with Mark, you. Mike, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Mike Morse wants to say something. Morse code is dead. It's no longer used in any communication. It, it, it will become. It will make a comeback. Are going to be pissed? It, 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 will, we, no. it will make a comeback when there's no other form of communication. Yeah, so I would, I would, I would, I would invest in it today. I, I still remember Morse code. Believe it. Alex, do, do you do you uh, keep in touch with some of your old San Francisco people from like the Holy City Zoo and not at all. You know, not at all. Not at all. No, really. No. I, the uh, only, the only, you, the when only, you're in New York, do you ever oh. go? Like I heard you mention the pit bull of comedy, Bobby Slayton. Uh, he's still touring, you know. He's really. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember when he was a voice of California coolers, <laughs> white coolers. Yeah. But uh, see, so do you go to the comedy clubs in New York at all? No. Interesting, because you you made quite a swerve. You were very co comedic cent centric. Uh, I think this was like late '80s when yeah. you were on the quake. Yeah. You know, I really and, rather not talk about those days, to be honest. Okay, let's talk about now. Uh, how long do you think Stern, guy like that's going to hang on for? I don't care. You don't care. I don't. So you don't care. get involved with the politics or anything like that. Huh? What? Uh, well, uh, 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 what about like? Uh, uh, do, do you think Ryan Seacrest is the latter day Casey Kasem? What is what is this become tonight? This is yeah, anarchy, was, Alex. Absolute was, anarchy. Yeah, yeah. It's not so. Tim? I went to Disneyland. You went to Disneyland. Disney yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Phil. Disney World. And uh, I, 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 I just like it. Disney Paris. It's definitely Disney Paris. I will never go back to it. It was Animal Kingdom was the one they dropped this off at. And uh, there was very few Mickeys. Uh, Pandora. Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I was like a fish out of water. I just kept walking in circles until my feet hurt. And then, uh, and as I said... There was all of these families. That's what happens when you send. Kids. That's what happens when you send an old Jew to Disney World. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God! You just read. I was. I just came back from there a week ago, celebrating my fiftieth birthday. No, but what yeah, I'm saying is, story. I'm telling you now. I, um, uh, I was, I was going. I was. What was I? Was we were traveling down. We were, I was moving to Florida. That was it. Yeah. I was moving Orlando. to Florida. <laughs> And, yeah. and Penn Jillette said to me, well, don't go to Disney World because it's just packed, you know, and you just and and, Sucks. and I said, well, I'm going to be there like January 15th. He says, oh, that's the best time to go. It seems <laughs> right. that on January 15th, nobody goes to Disney World. Right. Yeah. The kids are all back. And so school. you that's go. Why and, I, I went when I did. Yeah, well, like I right didn't I, did, I didn't have to wait online. For anything, right. I just, it was like, they would take hold you by your hand and lead you in, you know. There, there yeah, my was, mom is in a wheelchair, so I took her with me, so we didn't have to wait in line either, there, which uh, I, I couldn't do that for yeah. hours. Okay, okay, but wait a minute. Hey, 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 give us, hey, 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 no, Dave, 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 you're not the only guy on the line. I okay. know, but I wanted to get your, your I would, uh, I would like no, to have the other people be Disney, able to with talk. With Disney, did so, you stay at so, the resorts? Uh, no, no, I'm at the Gaylord Palms. And they Gaylord took us Palms. over there. Yeah. So they, they took us over there and uh, uh, dropped us off. And it was supposed uh -huh. to be a, 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 a special thing. At two and a half hours, you had to wait in line to go to this Avatar ride. Yeah, now, Pandora. Course, the boat ride lasts five minutes. Horrible. Is that what it is? Yeah, it was uh, horrible. I I, it was a four hour wait. I, I wasn't going on it. Uh, you know, I said, I'm not waiting. Yeah, two there's and a half two hours. rides there. And combined, one is like a three-hour wait. The the one where you ride the back of the bird, the five-hour wait, and it's it, you're on the ride for three and five minutes. It was the worst thing in the world, and it, it was like, what happened to Disney guest service? It used to be great. You you didn't even see any Disney employees out there. Right, uh, right. And you ask somebody, "Where's the bathroom?" They look at you you're talking Swahili. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the people there were Swahili, well, and uh, you know it was uh, it was quite scary. I called the front desk at a Disney resort, and they put me through to the call center from my room. The contemporary I called the front desk, and I go, "Are, are you at the front desk? Because I'm coming down there. I want to get like a razor. I couldn't get a razor on the plane." And they go, "Oh, this is the call center." I said, "I press zero on my phone. What kind of insanity is that? Just like the dental insurance thing." 
Our show tonight is brought to you by Universal Studios. Yeah, I don't know why anybody goes to this Disney World. I have. No I don't idea. think they're going to go anymore. It sucks. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you. If you go there, as I say, at the time of the year where you can just get on to everything fast. But if I, at, yeah. at my age, or you at your age, Phil, or any of these guys at their age, here they're going to stand in line for two and a half hours. Nothing's worth no standing in line for two and a half right. hours. Get a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, my mom was in a wheelchair. Like I said, if it wasn't the fact that we could just go through the disabled entrance, I I, 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 I would have gone crazy. I walked over to the restaurant. Well, so you, so you, so what you're telling us, uh, uh, Larry? Is that Larry I'm talking to? No. Which one, Larry? Dave. 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 Dave, Wait a minute. Interject something. You know, the only people that'll wait two and a half hours or two and a half days to stand in line for are the hardcore Trump people. If we want to get a little back political. Hey, I'm a hardcore Trump voter, and I didn't wait in line. Yeah. Well, it was a correlation. How dare you, how dare you uh, stereotype, Trump how voters. dare you stereotype Republicans? Yeah. <laughs> now that is Alex Bennett Radio Gold. But that's, but that's Republican. Hey, by the way, we've been joined, we've been joined, guys, by uh, our friend Patrick, who's in... Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, hey Patrick. Patrick. Where it's yeah. cold. Yeah. Yeah, cold. And, and by the way, Patrick, you know, I know you're a Star Wars fan, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, have you heard the newest about Star Wars? They're turning it into fucking uh, Star Trek. They're, they're turning it into a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Hey, Patrick, uh -huh. tonight I was in a wheelchair. What happened was I walked so much, I sat down in front of this restaurant, and there was a whole line of wheelchairs there. So I just pulled one out and climbed into it and, Good for uh, you. and, and took a break. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, Disney owns Star Wars. Yeah, I know Disney owns Star Wars. They own yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, and so they I own... went to the gift store. I wanted to get, you know, the, you know, they have the Force and the Dark Side. Yeah. So I'm kind of evil, so I want, like, some dark side merchandise. Yeah. No dark side merchandise. And then they got this uh, well, gay again, character again, from Beauty again, and the Beast, LaPouf. Again. No LaPouf merchandise. If there's no dark side merchandise, it's probably because they're, again, uh, discriminating against Republicans. The agenda, yeah. Or against Republicans. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah that's Pandora. It's, what it's, a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. And, oh my God! The six dollars for water. It's like a carnival. <laughs> it's, it, you know, I think this, this show tonight is my biggest pass, nightmare. It was like one hundred and eleven dollars or something. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, it's like like uh, uh, you were saying about you know, it's lucky if you could find somebody, and when you do, they're from Botswana. I, I mean, just I remember when I was a kid. It's like the same thing I was saying, like with Alex on the radio, and it's, it's great that Alex is still. Still, he doesn't. He still has an ethic, you know. That he gives it a hundred and ten percent. But at Disney, they're out to lunch. They they get your money once you walk in. You pay your hundred and twenty bucks. You know, hey, they don't care. They just don't care. Hundred and twenty bucks? What for? Yep. Is that one the admission to each of the parks? Is that is There's that a one? Parks. Is that a one day? Hey, is that a one day? One, one day. day. One, day. One, one day. Yeah. What what? Uh, uh, um, uh, Tim. You don't care if we talk about you in the third person, do you? No, not at all. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Bennett says, you know. Hey, I'm, Alex? Yes. What yeah. was your biggest radio payday ever? <laughs> My biggest radio payday ever? I'd have yeah. to think about that. I didn't I didn't have a singular payday. Because you were, you were, I mean... I mean, my biggest, my know, biggest, big my player. singular one-day payday like was when contract, I did... Like, what was your biggest contract? Because, like I said, I was going to college when I first heard you, and I followed you ever since. Well, that's when I had that seven-picture contract with MGM, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> you know, like Matt Allen, Hollywood yeah. Hamilton. But, Alex, this is Larry. You, you, yes? Your biggest payday was probably, like, the biggest payday... When um, uh, they they started up the uh, God, see I'm getting so old I can't remember anything. Uh, come on, the the magazine, the the the, the, the Rolling Billboard? Stone, Ro 
Rolling Stones in San Francisco and Hate Ashbury <laughs> when they they got some guy up the street that went oh my God. pictures and said, oh my God, Alex, don't you just want to. I want to. I'll just say I, I hate it. I can't do it I, anymore. I, I, want, I, I do have a certain no. propensity towards killing myself it, tonight. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking about that. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, you're driving me to do that. I, I might as well, you know, uh, burn off my my other two big questions. Is there anybody in in radio, you know, like these guys that are still lingering, your Rush Limbaugh's or Tom Likes's, that you just can't stand? You named you named one of them already. Yeah. Like us or Limba? Like us. Like us. Like us, yeah, he's a hack. He's an asshole. Oh, yeah, a complete yeah. piece of garbage. Uh, but you only listen talk. to him on the radio. You don't know him personally. I'm telling you, he's I an do know asshole. Him personally. Huh? Well, you knew him personally. I do know him personally. You know how far yeah, back I, I go with Dean. Tom Lyons? I used to be in the comedy business, Alex. Yeah, well, you know how far I back be, uh, I go with. Pretty good. You know how, <laughs> how, how, how far back I go with Tom Likas? Back to K- uh, like public, KFID? No, public access cable television in New York City, where he did oh shows. Oh, my God, with that Al, Al Golsey, the screw, and Robin Bird. Yeah, and I, I, was, I produced Midnight Blue. You know. I know, Alex. Yeah. You're a legend. Yeah, I know. In, in no, your, you really are. Mind. Anyway, now that, the point. Now, now you've got to admit something. Do you remember the oh commercials on Midnight Blue for the 976 numbers? And, and and the juke joints and the, and the deuce, oh midnight blue, my God, that was great TV, so much better than this YouTube crap. Yep. I remember. This is another thing I don't understand, Alex. Hey, can listen, you pre- enlighten me is, on this? This is exhausting. These I'm these too YouTube, old for this. these guys, the Jake Paul and Logan Paul and yeah. Vi- what's the appeal? I, I have no idea what you're even talking about. These these I, YouTubers. I have it's no idea. It's the new medium. Yeah, I you know. know I know. The, the I know. Content provider. This people. show this show is on YouTube uh, every every day, and it's. On I know. I, I, I But I'm talking about these hardcore guys like the Casey Neistat's, the Philip DeFranco's. Hey, oh, they're making like seventeen thousand hey, dollars a minute. Yeah. Dave, we got to have some equal time here. Okay, uh, I'm going to shut gotta, up. I'll just listen. No, no, I'm no, sorry. No, no, you you, you got to talk Republican politics. You're right. And <laughs> if you're not a Republican, then you can't talk. You know, like, so you are a Republican. Oh, right? God. I'm Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Is it, so am I. I'm a Jewish Republican. I don't vote. I say it worse. Uh, yeah. it's a liberal. A liberal. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm in Detroit. We just uh, elected a white mayor. My God, the city's like 87% black, <laughs> and they're going nuts. Why? Because they, got a white, their mind. because they got a white mayor? Yeah. Uh, the Coleman Young uh, son, the famous mayor from back in the day, his son ran against the incumbent, this guy Mike Duggan, and uh, it's 87% black here in Detroit. So in other words, if you look to the left, you look to the right, one of those guys is black. Um, and they had you know, a record low turnout. And this guy Duggan, the white guy, won 78% over 22%. For the black guy, those are almost. And those today, are almost they've Saddam. got uh, a, everybody's just freaking out, and I'm like, nobody voted. Well, uh, those are Saddam Hussein figures, aren't they? What? Yeah. I'm a I'm a black Republican Jew. Really? <laughs> you didn't look it. <laughs> Yitzhak uh, Leroy Rufus Thomas. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, hey, hey Phil, let yeah. me correct you. Just because you're from the dark side. Doesn't make it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, awesome. That was good. Hey, That's I a keeper. So, get a I bumper got sticker. so much soul. Bumper I sticker. Control. You know? Hey, can, can I? Can Larry just say something? Okay. Yeah, Listen, Larry. Larry, I, Larry I, for a while, Dave, just kind of shut up. Okay, and like yeah, let some other yeah, people. Yeah, talk. shut the. You know what up? Yeah. And, no, I'm just kidding. No, really, I'm kidding. But I, 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 I've been California most of my life. But I was actually raised in like the Harlem area as a kid. Yeah, you know, with. Uh, well, that's where I do my show from. I live. I live in Harlem. Yeah, it's a great place now. But back then, you know, hey, I'm Italian and Italian slash Jew. And, you know, it, it was a little tough, you know. Oh, I can your imagine. Your great-great-grandfather's name is Cohen. 
But anyway, it doesn't matter. It, it, it was my greatest memories were there, and then coming here with my grandparents and living with them. But I go going going back a while. But, you're, you know, you're you're in Sacramento, I by the way. The Mike is. on concerts in Fresno, California, where I graduated high school when I was fourteen. Mm-hmm. On the during the '60s, when you know you weren't allowed in, but I got in because I had some bros. I mean, I have 78 to James Brown. I just, I just going back. Wait a minute, wait, wait about minute, wait minute, wait, Larry, you're losing funny. me. What point are you trying to make? I'm, I'm trying to make a point that, you know, you're in New York. I always wanted to go back to New York. Never made it back. I got a lot of friends in New York. I talk to them all the time. Um, and you know, it, it's like, well, your show. I don't know what, what? the point of the show is. I, 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 I have. I, well, it I used remember, to have a direction, but now it doesn't any longer. Thirty what? years. Yeah, and then before then I used to listen to the Bay Area, but it's like, okay, KNBR, all the talk shows, all those hosts, all that stuff, you know. Uh, but but I'm I'm just throwing okay. out a name because when I was in you know business in the the three piece suit doing my thing. Okay, downtown, all right, all right, all right. Hold hold on a second. You know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to get rid of at least two of the people that are here on the phone. The only reason being that because you can't yep. see anybody else and uh, you can't really kind of communicate with us. Yeah, if but it, I don't, you know, I don't have Skype, but I know. Facebook has a connection that will put you through. I don't know if you know how to do that, but you know, we could do that that way. Cause I, I have no problem with Facebook. Every time I do Skype, I do yeah. nothing but yeah. problems. Well, so hey, this, saying, this, not, show, not, this show, this show exists. Yeah. But, but it, it's, it, it's a hard time. It's a hard time for me. It's hard for me to control the conversation. Uh, with people on the phone. But thank you guys for calling, okay? Uh, all right. Well, I, I, okay. all I wanted to say is, hey, I appreciate your show. You okay. brought back a thank lot you. of good memories. I okay. just wanted to talk about now, but I don't know what subject we're really yeah. well, broaching. Uh, you know, so. if, you can, if you can come back to us sometime with Skype, I'd love to hear you. Anyway, look. Oh, boy. Oh, God. I thought I was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was hoping that Mike would start rambling about something. <laughs> you, you, you yes, exactly. I, I, I kept my mouth shut. I kept my mouth shut. I bite my tongue the whole time, Alex. I yeah, wanted to yeah. say something, but I didn't. Uh, okay, uh, Patrick. Hey, Tim. Now would have been a good time for you to be rambling about your conspiracy. And I would have been supporting you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was right behind you. 100% that Donald Trump and Putin were butt-fucking. <laughs> By the way, uh, Tony's just joined us. Uh, uh, it, well, Tim, you see, Tim calls by phone, but Tim knows how to do it because he's done it enough that he knows that there are other people who are talking. And he understands the format. These guys thought it was one of those kind of shows where you call up and talk to Alex about his career. What was my biggest payday? It's none of their business. It was a candy bar about this big. They not made these big. giant paydays uh, as a promo, and that was my biggest payday. No, uh, I, I know what my biggest payday was, but uh, it all went to the government. <laughs> we couldn't afford paydays. All we got were O. Henry's. Well, no, what happened was is I did a, a concert at the Frost Amphitheater, and 9,000 people showed up at about 15 bucks a head. And I walked away with a good chunk of change for one day, okay? Wow. But then I found out that somehow my business manager hadn't paid some taxes that we had to pay, and so all the profits of that thing went to the paying the taxes. So it turned out not to be my biggest payday. You know? It's good timing. Huh? Yeah, oh, well, I was glad <laughs> I, I made all that money in that one day. I mean, it was, it was like $25,000 or something. It was just some kind of... Payroll tax or something we didn't pay or whatever. So we paid it and, you know. Hey, talk to Wilbur Ross. He can tell you how to get out of paying those taxes. Well, uh, uh, well uh, yeah, right. Now, uh, we have this thing with Moore. What's his name? Um, oh, the Moore. Uh, Judge Moore. The Judge Moore. Who, the got, ge- uh, who got elected. It Was it Alabama? No, he didn't get and elected. He-, he didn't get elected. There's some, some kind of runoff or something. No, oh, he, he, thought, he won the primary. He, well, oh, okay. But the primary, he, wait a minute, hold on a second. Election. But the primary was when, Tim? Last week or something, or two weeks ago. Well, since when do you run a primary on election day? Wouldn't that be in September? Uh, no, they're going to have a special election soon. I, still, I thought, uh, Tim, it, I thought he got elected. In a month or so. 
Oh, this I is to get, he's, wait a minute. He's this running is, against the Democrats still. This is to get Sessions' seat, right? That he gave yeah, up. Yeah, they want Sessions to come back and take his seat, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we, you know, the funny thing is, uh, this guy was not supported by Trump, but supported by Bannon and a few others. And uh, it, it turns out this guy's really off his rocker. Uh, nope. But they think this is going to invigorate his base because well, he's the one that demanded they leave the, the Ten Commandments. Yeah, the, but what, what about the uh, what was he well, accused minute, of? Was it child just, molesting? Wait a Hold on a second. Let's oh, oh, let's oh, back oh, off. Oh, Hold on a second. Let's back off because there are people watching and listening who don't know yeah. what we're talking about. This guy is Roy Moore. This is the guy, if you watch television, who was the candidate. What state is it in again? Uh, I thought it was Alabama. 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 Uh, yeah, Alabama, uh, who uh, pulled out his gun when he was giving a speech. You know, you remember that guy? Oh, yes. that, 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 that dweeb of a guy, right? Uh, and uh, he uh, he was just this really real right winger. You know, he wanted the Ten Commandments to stay on the lawn and... Uh, <laughs> Of, of the of the uh, courthouse uh he, what else did he want he, he's a real right wing asshole not a good right winger like, uh he uh, he made some uh, uh some uh, opinions i think that were uh challenged against gay people yeah but anyway here's the point folks in case you're just listening as it does to most people with this kind of morality suddenly it comes out that when he was 32 he had sex with a 14 year old girl Oh my. Do you know that he went to, oh, uh, he to just, West Point? Wanna, this is, remember, I'm sorry. This yeah, is but anyway, first. yes, yes, Patrick. Nobody's normal. No. Uh, <laughs> there, there, the thing is, I heard, um, I don't know, I don't remember if it was him talking today or if I uh, read it, but if basically what he said, in, if I read it or, or if I heard him, I can't, is, He'd been running for office for 40 years. He'd been in several high positions, uh, including, you know, as a judge and all of this other stuff. And he said, why now for this particular election is this coming out? Well, what, when what, 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 all of these other high level positions and local positions, they could have, she could have uh, come out then. Hey Patrick, it's because of Weinstein. Now, well, that, yeah, yeah. That, now, wait well, a and, and that's the thing he doesn't seem to realize. It's just well, there is a fad now, if you want to call mm -hmm. it that, to out all these people. So if, if you did it, you know, when you're 32, and how old is he now? Old as you know, whatever. Uh, no, he graduated West Point in 1969, uh, and he got his uh, JD degree in 77. Okay, but with the point that I'm making here is uh, he doesn't seem to realize that these things come back to bite you in the ass these days, you know, and that uh, things that you did that back then you figured out. Ah, well, you know, in you know, this, in Alabama, yes. most women that are 14 are married. Yeah, that's right. To their cousins. <laughs> to their <laughs> cousins. I, thought, I, thought, I thought they were 13. Yeah, what? Hey, what Alex, wait, did wait, you hear what the, uh, the state auditor said? In what? support of Roy Moore? No. No. He said, uh, we, we think of Joseph and Mary. Mary was a child at the time they went to Bethlehem, and she oh got my. pregnant. But uh, he, did not, he didn't understand that it was immaculate conception <laughs> and said that that was, you know, that was, Mary was a child when, you know, yeah. the Virgin Mary was a child. That's just unbelievable. Well, <laughs> any, anyway, uh, Patrick, you wanted to say something. No, I, that was... That was it. I mean, and and I thought he made a good point because with all of this shit coming out now, uh, I mean, I think the guy is off his rocker personally, but that, no, I mean, everybody's making an accusation of every. I, I mean, when I heard about Louis C.K., I'm like, what the fuck is this now? I mean, is this shit? Cool? You know, every everybody's falling out of the woodwork coming up with these different things from 30 fucking years ago and what's real, what isn't. I mean, yeah. it, just, it hey, seems to me it, it is a fact. I got an Patrick. accusation. What? I got an accusation. I watched TV at the foot of uh, Alex's bed uh, at, with him. Right so I think that that 
You know, that was... Oh, uh, God! Yeah. Was that at the Michael Jackson mansion? It, it was the Alex Bennett mansion. Which one isn't trying to take your pillows, Alex? <laughs> I, I got, I got a note for Patrick. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I posted the uh, the Washington Post story on mm. the Facebook in the comments, but <clears throat> they had 30 sources and there's four victims, so it's a fairly credible story for Roy Moore. And think about the, the Democrat. We have a Democrat okay, named okay, Anthony Wiener. All he did was sex somebody. He served 21 months. Hey, and Mitch Roy McConnell. Like Mitch McConnell is calling for Roy Moore to exit the Alabama Senate race. He should leave. Yeah. I mean, this is crazy. Roy, yeah, he, he doesn't want him in the Senate because McConnell does not want to have to defend Roy Moore once he comes to D.C. That's the problem. Oh. But this, they'll go down to 50 votes if they don't have Roy Moore in there. Well, I think Roy Moore is using as his excuse that the woman gave him permission. So, that, yeah. He stalked, but, uh, the, he stalked the girl. He stalked. She was sitting alone at a courthouse. And offered to watch the girl while her her mom was in court, and then called her the next day and took him to the house and did all this what, stuff. What if what if she did not look to be fourteen, and what if uh, she was chasing him? He, he, what, he was uh, a what, prosecutor. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And he, and he didn't know she was she was fourteen, but she was chasing him. Would that change the story? Uh, mm, it, it, no, it, it, I don't think so. I, I don't know if you can have consensual sex. If they're 14, you should be checking IDs and making a photo. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, there were a lot. Uh, well, I'm not going to go into something that happened to me once, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. Well, there, no, the, I, 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 but he's got a pattern. It's just not the one girl. It's four, at least four victims. And the guy's a wacko. I, 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 I was living in New York City where, um, and I think uh, even uh, 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 Phil can attest to this, Women sometimes didn't look their age, right? They they, uh, they were young and looked far more mature than their age. Uh, and I yeah. met up with a fourteen-year-old once who looked like she was twenty-one, and and he, and she never ever told me that she was until one right. day she admitted to it. But now, he offered the he told the mother he was going to babysit her. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So my question yeah. is. Who really is the victim? You know, the person that's been lied to, or the or or, or the per, or, or the girl who is underage and has sex with some guy. See, I I'm wondering about some of these. The question in some of these things about what were the circumstances? You know, I mean, if I if someone with some girl said to me she was 14, I would stay as far away from that girl as is humanly possible. Hey, it happened right. to me. Uh, I met this. I met this girl. Yeah. Uh, she certainly. Uh, she was. Uh, she was married. Uh, left her husband, uh, and it turns out she was emancipated uh, from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And uh, you would swear, she, uh, you know, I was probably twenty-two at the time, mm -hmm. but she was fourteen, and uh, you know, she stayed with me for uh, a okay. couple of weeks. I'll, I'll tell you a story in a second. First, we want to go to Patrick because he has his hand up. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing is, when the Bill Cosby thing came out, it seemed like it was a pile of <laughs> But it, it seemed credible once the Quaaludes were brought in and all of that, that, okay, you can see it. it I'm having a real hard time believing all of this shit coming out over the last few weeks, except for a few. Like Weinstein, you know, Weinstein and, and a few, it just, it really seems like a lot of bullshit that if, if people are looking for a payday or they're looking for fame. I mean, Corey uh, Feldman said uh, Charlie Cheen was uh, abused him. Why? Because no, no, Corey no, Feldman no, 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 no. He, it, it was Corey Haim and he told somebody, Corey Haim is dead now. Yeah. Uh, 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 he told somebody before his death that he had been raped by Charlie Sheen, as an example. Uh, and so that's the story. It isn't Corey Feldman. I know we get them mixed up. How yeah. Yeah. You know, Corey, well, they were Fe friends, Corey right? Feldman should run around with a sign on his shirt saying, I'm the one that's still alive. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but, but, 
I don't know. It just seems like um, a bunch of horseshit to me. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, I don't see anybody getting their day in the court. Well, it, you know, again, again, you know, all of this stuff is to be proven. Even the Kevin Spacey stuff, you know, is just is just at this point conjecture and accusation. It is not proof that anything ever happened. Uh, uh, and yet other people then come forward and tell their story. Well, maybe they're trying to get publicity. Too. None of these things, no matter how many people come forward, even in the Cosby case, there are 50 women who say he drugged them. But yet, that has not been proven in any of those cases as of this moment. Uh, and, and so the question is, how do we as an honest American public accept or not accept this? Now, I heard something good today. And what I heard today uh, was, uh, 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 I think, very telling. I was watching one of these talk shows. It might have been The View. And one of the hostesses on that show said, well, the problem isn't whether Kevin Spacey ever did any of this or not, uh, or whether, uh, 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 who are some of the other people that have been, you know. Oh. But, but she said, I don't think that in any event I can ever watch a Kevin Spacey film again. Well, I, and I think, no, and I think that's the problem that these people are facing. Uh, Hollywood's very forgiving if you make them a lot of money. Oh, hey, okay. I, I, I'd sign up any day for Kevin Spacey's problem right now. Why? You know, why, sign up. why are you saying you would sign up for it? Well, uh, I'm thinking about all the people that are, have waitress jobs, and all the people. You know, I, I caught we I caught my boss at a social security office. You know, attacking women and turning men. All the women that were taken advantage of and had no power to fight back. Uh, the, 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 Kevin Spacey is going to be okay. Well, I mean, he's going to be, be okay, okay, but he may not be okay. In England, they're thinking of charging him with a crime. Well, if he did something, yeah, he should. He, yeah, they, but what, I'm, know, what I'm saying what is, goes. what I'm saying is, he may have a lot of money now, but when he's through with all the lawyers who are being yeah, employed but I'm not going to feel to sorry for him, he might be working with me. He's, he's, he's not going to have a hell of a lot left, but the lawyers are going to have a lot. Yes, Jeff. Jeff. I appreciate your legal perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on making these decisions and saying yes, uh, if it if it never went to court, it doesn't count, it, it, and it doesn't. I agree with you. However, what I think is there's a cultural difference that has changed, and and it, and it used to be when when certain things happen with a guy and a, and a young woman, whatever, or a gay guy, or or an ungay guy who wanted to be gay. Things would happen. They, it happened to all of us. We knew about these things. Yeah. But we never told anybody. A, because A, we said, you know what? We were, we were just going to blow it off because nothing that much happened. The other thing, for a lot of women, a lot of things happened. They really didn't want to happen. And, and, and they had to live with that for years and years and years. And all of a sudden, and and they're and if they ever went to court or to the police or whatever, they would tell them, "There's no chance you're going to win anyway. Ooh, forget about it." And they were probably yeah, but you and, don't want to try and, a guy. Wait a minute, in that Jeff, day, you don't in, try in those a guy in, in the court of he, public opinion. But in those days, in that day and age, I'll get to you in a second, Mike. Uh, in that day and age. Uh, uh, that was the advice that cops gave uh, victims, and the reason they gave them that advice was it was true. You, That's you right. Know. So, well, but, all of a sudden, the rules just changed this year. Well, I don't think. Well, again, I don't think that must know. not be legal. The rules did. The rules didn't change. People's perception uh, changed, but well, the, the rules mother, this uh, the, the, are that yeah. nobody's been convicted yet. If you look at all of these guys, which one of these celebrities has been convicted uh, so far? A lot of them have settled. Some for millions. Wait a minute, dollars. but that doesn't that doesn't count, That's, Tim. That doesn't count. A no, lot of times, count. a lot of times, you settle because a bunch of lawyers tell you 
look, you don't want this to go to court for a prolonged amount of time. It's going to cost you a fortune. Pay less and pay it off, and and you you get away from this. So right. I, I think the the big payouts make it seem like it's true. Well, thirty two million from uh, O'Reilly, if that's true, uh, you know. But it's still a settlement should not make you be considered guilty. It's a settlement. That's what it o is. O'Reilly says it's not true. Well, then why did he pay thirty two million? Why didn't he take the thirty two million what? and sue the woman? Uh, this guy Herkovic, who's on Shark Tank is being accused of something and he turned he immediately turned around and sued the woman saying this is libel i did this is not the case it was a woman that he went with for three years who claimed she was raped well i mean what do you distinguish between a night of sleeping in bed together and rolling over and having sex and another night where it's rape you know so he's suing her so now she's suing him you know big so fast. but what you but then then you have Weinstein, who sent private detectives out. Well, I mean, he, he, reportedly sent them out. You see, we ha again. Right, absolutely. Yeah, we well, okay, it. wait a minute. Did, did I go to you, Mike? No. Okay. Well, Mike right, first and Patrick. If it, if it happened 30 years ago, isn't the law kind of, you know, say. Statute. Statute, statute of law. Limitation. Limitation. You can't prosecute after a certain amount of years. Oh, no, they can't be. Uh, no, no, correct. No, for instance, uh, several, uh, I think. Uh, 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 Spacey could not be prosecuted for that situation that happened. In fact, there wasn't a rape in that case. There wasn't even a rape. He just attacked the kid. He just jumped on the kid. You know, he was aggressive so, uh, if, towards it, the if kid. it happened 30 that, years ago, now, so what? Now, last year, supposedly, Spacey stuck his pants down the, uh, down the front of, a, of an 18-year-old, of an 18 year old, and the mother went on television to tell the story, but there's, no, there's really no criminal offense there, you know? It's going to be pretty hard to, you know, maybe they give him a misdemeanor or something for, you know, groping or something like that. Yes, Patrick? Yeah, when, How do you prove it? Bill O'Reilly settling how many other settlements. Um, that's a lot like pleading the fifth. That doesn't necessarily make you guilty. It, it, it's a matter of, of protecting yourself. Um, or like O'Reilly, you know, protecting his family, trying to keep things, or protect his kids, or, or whoever it would be that would do settlement. Uh, to me, it, it's the equivalent of pleading the fifth in court. I mean, you can't assume that I'm guilty if I'm pleading the fifth. Well, that's absolutely I may have correct. Reason. Yeah. What were you going to say? Uh, yes, uh, our our good friend. Uh, you know, I was reading that. I was uh, I heard that interview with the with the one with Spacey with the mother for the kid. Yeah. And dude, like he was having drinks with him, and he was. She said he was under age eighteen. No, he wasn't under. Well, he was under age in drinking. In fact, he was yeah. drinking. Now, they, 21. Yeah, he, wait, wait, wait a minute. And he had age. a, you know, he was 18. He was yeah, drinking. 21 is and the, the drinking age. The way he got the 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 uh, ability to get a drink was he had a fake ID. Okay, right. Now, okay. here's a question, Alan. And now they're saying, well, Spacey got him drunk. Well, he couldn't have got him drunk if he didn't use a fake ID. Yeah, I mean, here's a, I'm not trying to take Spacey's defense here, because it could be he said, Listen, he said. I but am, first of all, I, the kid am, shouldn't even be there drinking. I am of the feeling that Spacey is probably a pretty big asshole. All right? I think he is. I think you're right. You yeah. know, and, and, and people hated working with him because he was just, a, you know, he was a prima donna. And guys didn't like getting their asses pinched by him or having him come on to them just because they're working on it. Uh, so all these things being taken into consideration, I, I, I understand why people are out to get Kevin Spacey. But get him fair and square. And I don't necessarily yeah. think this claim by this uh, former anchor woman uh, about her son, who, by the way, is over 18. He's now somewhere like, uh, I think, maybe 19 or 20. And he wasn't even at the press conference. No, He exactly. wasn't even there. He should be the one making the accusations, not the mother. And Alex, save Spacey says, save Kevin Spacey told you. And by the way, Alex. by the way, if you're listening to this program, folks, I am yeah. not defending Kevin Spacey. No, what no, I'm defending let... is our sense of fairness. Yeah, okay. but here's a question. Say if he told you, listen, he told me he was 21, the kid. He was buying me drinks. I bought him drinks. And I think he was coming on to me, but I had the, it was misinterpreted. He could say that. How can you say he's lying? Well, you know, I don't think, even if you think somebody is interested in you, that doesn't give you permission to shove your no, hand down. No, I'm not saying that. But say if he okay. said he grabbed me, though. Say if he said he grabbed me. Well, nobody would. 
Uh, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying. Although you got your you got your teeth fixed, so you're a little more attractive now, Tony. Okay, you know, sorry. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you get what I'm saying. I mean, I I, do, I, yeah. I think what we're talking about here is fairness. And entire yeah. careers are, you know, people are now getting. Uh, I mean, the latest thing now is with Louis C.K. Now, this is That's a guy crazy. who right now is in the midst of incredible success. Uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, five women described encounters with Louis C.K. in which the comedian sing allegedly behaved inappropriately. Now, we're not talking about rape. We're not talking about copying a feel. We're talking about acted inappropriately. He, by taking his, all his clothes off and masturbating in front of them at, during a gathering in his hotel room. Well, first of all, uh, the minute I, if I were a woman or a guy, and a guy suddenly stripped off all his clothes and started jerking off, the first thing I would do get is out turn of the around room. and walk out of the room. You know. Throw five hours down. Let's leave, Alex. Like, Why did they stay <laughs> so they could describe it later on? You know, you know I mean, I would immediately, I mean, if any of you guys <laughs> stripped naked and started jerking off, I'd say, see you later, guys. I, I don't even want to hang out with you, you know. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, we have another unidentified phone caller. Who is our phone caller? Who is this? Hello? Hey. Who is this? Can you hear Jack. us? Jack. Jack. Oh, it's Jack. Jack? Don't tell me he's, yeah. doing, he's doing the Louis C.K. <laughs> uh, uh, who? Uh, Jack who? Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay. That's not the, oh, he thinks he's Jack Bauer, but keep us on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, what, what is it tonight? Everybody suddenly found the phone number? What? I, uh, <laughs> you advertised it earlier. I know. I said it's on the screen. Uh, but anyway, so Louis C.K. here is, uh, uh, he was a comedian they admired. The woman would be together. His in, intention seemed uh, collegial, uh, Times reports. As soon as they sat down in his room, still wrapped in their winter jackets and hats, Louis C.K. asked if he could take out his penis. Well, you know, first of all, i got to hand it to Louis as one man to another who believes in being proper. I think it was proper of him to ask if he could pull out his penis. Why didn't they say no? <laughs> you know? Hey, now, now there's a guy uh, who runs a hotel a uh, very famous hotel uh, in London, I think, uh, that they're accusing of uh, groping. Uh, I don't know his name. Andre Balaz? -A I don't know. But, you know, here's the thing. There all these accusations, it seems to be the, the uh, a, a fad to come out with stories about people who have somehow been improper with you. And most of these stories have nothing to do with rape somebody being forced to give a blow job or anything like that it is they're just stories of people who took off their clothes and started jerking off well i mean you know you don't have uh, his, no, nobody he didn't force anybody to watch it okay that's my point point. and louis ck's that, career now he um he was supposed to be on the colbert show he canceled his appearance there a movie that he he starred in uh, was coming out this week. It's been pulled back from distribution. You know, and the best part is what they did to Spacey. You ready for this? Big movie. Ridley Scott movie. Coming out at Christmas. And Spacey is one of the stars of the film. In an unprecedented uh, hold move, bold move rather, Ridley Scott along with the Imperative Entertainment's Dan Friedkin and Bradley Thomas have decided to remove Kevin Spacey from their finished movie. They're going to replace him with Christopher... And recast it. Recast it with Christopher Plummer. They're going to go back between now and Christmas and reshoot all of uh, Kevin Spacey's scenes uh, in which he plays J. Paul Getty. Uh, and uh, here's Jack Bauer calling again. Nah, I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. Plus, uh, he, 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 Jack. If you want to be, if you want to be, uh, uh, if you want to call using Skype, you have to do so uh, as a. Uh, actually, I could call him back. Tell you the truth. If you know, but he's but on he's, a phone, he's, he's, right? He's on a phone. Yeah, he's on a phone. So it's not. Why don't you just limit it to one phone uh, guy? Uh, you know, 
in, uh, that, at a time. Well, no, because there are other people that do know how to use the phone on this show, you know. Yeah. But anyway, the point is that they have gone. They're going to spend a fortune to excise him from this film. Uh, quite frankly, shit. I would just release it, and if there's a loss to be taken, take the fucking loss, because this film probably won't do well anyway. And it might even do better if Spacey was in it out of curiosity. I was actually hoping to see it because of him now. Yes, now that... yes, Patrick. That sucks. What I was going to ask is, if, if, the, if the risk is that it's not going to do well because Spacey's in it, how much money are they spending extra to reshoot all of this stuff, and it, 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 like you said, it may not even do well anyway. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And I heard that, I think Mark Wahlberg is in the film, and oh. some other, and they all said the same thing, that they want, you know, they, they're more comfortable with it being recast. It, just, just fucking bizarre. Well, it is. Uh, it's it's going to be a million. It's going to spend millions of dollars to reshoot every scene. This, 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 is a, this, could, this could set a record. What do you mean? It could, could, set, be, it could set a record. Where the making, of, the making of the movie documentary makes more than the movie itself. <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe. Are they re re going to reshoot the making of the movie? Uh, right. You know, well, they'll have both versions, yes. and you can, yes. you can choose your own version. Yeah. I want to see the space yes. one. Patrick. Hey, um, oh, with the usual suspect, if there is a, uh, an anniversary coming up, maybe they can just get rid of him out of that movie yeah. and have that be the director's cut. That was a good yeah. I saw that in the theaters. That was a great movie. The name of the film, by the way, is... Uh, Beginners? No. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Excuse me. That, that's what Christopher Plummer won an Academy Award for. All the money in the world is the picture, and the part is of J. Paul Getty, uh, and he'll be replaced by Christopher Plummer. Uh, I just I find it, you know, ridiculous. You know, uh, how much what is it going to cost them to reshoot this thing? Well, yes, a million my, dollars. All, all the money in the world. Million dollars. Try I'm ten million. Ten million. That's what I meant. Try, you know, yeah, try yeah, twenty yeah, million. Ten to twenty million. You know, they that's have, probably they what they're going to have to. They that's what they'll have they, to pay Christopher Plummer. They probably no. They probably have to had to tear down. They probably have torn down all the sets already for the picture. Now what do is they he, have to do? Rebuild them. Is I mean, it going to look right then? You think? What I would what do I probably do? is I would use Christopher Plummer against a blue screen and superimpose him over Kevin Spacey or or take Kevin Spacey's body and put Plummer's face on him. If they're going to do that, why not they replace him with Jar Jar Binks? He no, works no, for free. No, oh, he was terrible. No, song. but fa face replacement is uh, is is quite well known actually in the business, and and it's a, t a technology that uh, that is being used all the time. So you know. Uh, why not do that? But they can. I I just it's ridiculous. Yes, uh, uh, Mike. You know, if they're going to reshoot it, you think they're going to get it ready, have it ready by Christmas? I don't think so. Well, uh, they're going to try. They're going to try. I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. Well, it says they're going to they're going to release it at Christmas time. That's what I heard uh, today. It says. Uh, Spacey worked about ten, eight to ten days on all the money in the world. His character is integral to the film. The report notes that Ridley, Scott, and Friedkin, along with others involved with the movie, became incensed with the sordid allegations against Spacey, might doom the film that Scott dropped everything to direct and on which so many people worked so hard did not deserve to see the results hobbled in the marketplace because of a taint of scandal. So they took control of the narrative. Well, I got news for you. I had no desire to go see this fucking film, and I don't think any of you did, and I think that if I heard that they stood by Kevin Spacey and said, eh, you know, he does a great job in this film, and it's already filmed, and we got to release it because a lot of people's livelihoods are depending on this, everybody would forgive them, and they go ahead and do it, and let, uh, let, let's see what happens in the marketplace. Uh, when Kim Jong-un didn't like that film... About some about two guys trying to go and kill Kim Jong Un. The Sony film as, as a comedy. The interview. 
Uh, that film looked like it was doomed to absolute failure at the box office. But the minute Kim Jong-un opened his mouth and the minute it looked like uh, they were being attacked by North Korea, that film made a fort. In fact, they didn't even put it in theaters. They were afraid to put it in theaters for fear the theaters would get bombed. So they put it I, on Netflix and it made a fortune. Or they put it I on pay per view. The that was it. They put it on pay per view uh, and it made a. It was like Christmas or Christmas Day, and I saw it in Berkeley. They yeah. uh, it was the one theater that they released it in. Yeah, uh, uh, I saw the movie. But pay per view. What I'm saying is, I think they put it on pay per view, not Netflix. Pay per view, and at pay per per view, it made more money than that film would have ever made in the theaters because everybody wanted to see what this thing was. It's a terrible film, but they wanted to see what it was. You know, so, yeah. I, you know, uh, it, it's amazing. You know, I just think I think I think we've lost our minds here. And I, uh, you know, I don't know about Kevin Spacey's career ever being able to come back from this. But then again, we never thought Woody Allen's would. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping he gets a comeback. Yeah. Uh, you hope what who gets a comeback. What are they doing comeback? with Gordon I mean, if it, we don't, it's all allegations. So you never know. Like you said, I, you know, I hope it's not true, but. Well, you know, what were you going to say, Patrick? I, I was just going to mention about Woody Allen because I, I mean, I know people who will not see uh, any movies with like Mel Gibson or um, Clint Eastwood directing or in them anymore because of the politics and that. That's just stupid. Yeah. And that would be, I'm never going to watch The Usual Suspects anymore, it, you know. Because Spacey's in it or whatever. I mean, give me a fucking break. You know, I mean, well, they weren't. Hey, the I'm not going to NFL games because they take a knee. I, uh, I have a chance to see Hamilton in Dallas uh, during uh, in, in about three months uh, for free. And, uh, you know, I was thinking well, about it. Well, pretty much that, a Dallas, the Dallas company of Jefferson is almost free to go see. So, you know. Well, it's not uh, well, on Broadway it was, it's, that's a thousand They're talking about it ticket. being the closing night event for our next convention that everybody will go to Hamilton, a special show. You're going to love but, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah you could, I know how much you love rap. Oh, yeah. Is it rap? <laughs> the, whole thing, the whole thing's rap. It's hip hop. It's hip hop? Yes. No. Hey, can you? Oh, my God. Hey, Alex. You didn't know you that, Tony? What? The Hamilton was 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 rap. A little bit. Jackie told me it was one of the best shows he's ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, he yeah. Like, he said it was great. But yeah. uh, but, he, but he but nevertheless, it it's is, rap. I know that. And I can't what? imagine what? Phil sitting through two hours of rap. <laughs> well, That's you know, funny. I've gone to a number of rap <laughs> concerts <laughs> and I've I've photographed them uh, at you know the UC theater. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's different. I mean, I I it wouldn't be my choice. Yeah, it's different. Uh, Patrick, what were you laughing at? I, I, I didn't know it was rap. Oh, you didn't know it was rap? <laughs> I don't think I don't think it is. I think he's pulling our leg. No, I'm not putting. I'm not pulling no, our leg. I think he's telling the truth. Jeff, yet. do you know about Hamilton? Am I lying to them? Turn on your microphone. I thought the show was fantastic. I saw it. Oh, you saw it. But it's rap, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So you know, I'll let you know when I'm putting you on, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, not putting hey, you on that one. Yes, Tim. Did you want to see the Gore Vidal movie, though? No. Oh, I did want to see that. Yeah, that looked good. I didn't want to see Gore Vidal when he was alive. Yeah. Yeah. Did you meet him? <laughs> no. Are they going to replace him in that movie, too? I think I guess he already space, has right? been. He already has been. Yeah. Yeah, I went to IMDb. They already have Christopher Plummer oh, yeah. uh, replacing Kevin Spacey on the oh, cast. Like, oh, yeah. Really? They have it down already? In, uh, in, in yeah, IMDb? it's off of Kevin Spacey's page. If you go to the movie page, it shows Christopher Plummer, Plummer as the third person in the cast. Mark Wahlberg, Michelle Williams, Christopher Plummer. Holy shit. Wow. Timothy Hutton. Charlie Plummer's in. And why not have why not have an asshole play an asshole? I mean, isn't that? I mean, uh, 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 J. Paul Getty was one of the biggest assholes in the world. In fact, he let his uh, what his nephew or something get his ear cut off, or his son get his ear cut off by kidnappers rather than play, pay the ransom. Yeah, uh, it was his son. Yeah, it was his son. 
uh, he was a prick. And so you get Kevin Pespacey to play a prick, and it's it's perfect casting. Yeah. Maybe he can play Trump in a year or two. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, hey, what do you think about Schiller and his testimony? Schiller? Yeah, Schiller? The, uh, the bodyguard that for Trump for oh, years yeah, yeah, justified he, in front of the committee. Yeah, he said there was no truth to the fact that Trump got no, peanut. No, that's not what he said. He said they offered it, and he, he, he thought it was a joke, and he kind of told him no. But he went on to his room. He doesn't know what happened because he wasn't there. Oh. So it, 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 it bolsters the fact that the dossier was right for everything. We don't know whether the event actually occurred. Well, you know something? But, let, let me just say this. If, in fact, Trump got peed on, Thank God there's no, no, something. That's not what happened. Thank God there's no, something human about it. They paid on the bed that Michelle Obama and um, Barack used. It, it, it was nothing. Well, nothing about having sex with Trump. Supposedly they have. They, he had the girls go in and pee on that bed because he hated Obama so bad. And it's not that they have a sex film of him, but they might have uh, that too. Sounds like bullshit. Well, I, I, there was one guy, Seth Abram, Abrams. I did post a link to his thread that has some of the facts, or what, some proposed facts, yeah. that all, everything kind of fell in place, and whether the that final event occurred or not. It does most of the fact that he was there. It was the biggest business day of his life. They got approval to go with the Moscow Tower. They got the funding. Putin set him up with his finance person and the, and the, the, did, the guy that did the permits. It was going to be his biggest payday ever. So it was his biggest win in business in his entire career. Wow. And then they didn't cancel it till February this year when they said the the, the Moscow Tower is now a dead project. I he didn't know. get elected until January. You know? I know. Uh, I, I know, so, but... Uh, you know, but, I'm wondering, I'm wondering... But he uh, said he had nothing to do with oh, oh, the Russians, I, and he had already signed the biggest deal of his lifetime. Well, anyway, I, the thing I, I'm, I wonder is, you know, there were the stories that Trump had had sex with a 14-year-old. You remember that, don't you? Well, yeah, there's there's allegations of that out there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Why haven't these suddenly surfaced during this new fad that we've got going on here? At least let the fad produce something, you know? Why well, is there's, it, there's why, been a few rumblings and a few small articles about it. Why right, is but, it that uh, during this fad, nobody's brought up the fact that Kirk Douglas raped Natalie Wood? She's dead. Yeah, and he's 101 or something. So they, the family denies it, but it supposedly is pretty empirical evidence because Natalie right. Wood told the story to other people. that she, she was called in by Kirk Douglas, who was one of the biggest producers and directors at the time, to, uh, 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 about a movie, and he proceeded to rape her. And Gina Lola Brigida said that she was raped at 19. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You know. Uh, it was in today's... News. Yeah, you're, you're, th that's actually a technique that the journalists used when they do sources. If you're if you're alleging something like that, you have to you have to have three or four credible witnesses that you shared your story with, and the timeline has to match and everything. So that's some of the techniques. Yeah. And for the Roy Moore, <sighs> Moore Ray, Roy Moore, they had thirty sources they talked to, yeah. and everything a added up and matched. Yeah. It, there was no discrepancies. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I, 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 so I'm if you get raped, go out and tell a few of your friends. That's the key. Well, I again, I started to you know, look at my history to see if there was anywhere that somebody could claim something, and yeah, I know one situation. Remember, I always talked about the woman who raped me. Right. Yeah. You know? uh, that woman, I think, is crazy enough to come back and 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 claim that I raped her. Don't give she, her any ideas. No, but she was that she was that nuts. Okay. That it, it, and then if she says it, okay, let's just say she says it because I know she's she's she'd be crazy enough to do it. I'm just no big shot anymore, so it doesn't that, matter. That wasn't the stalker, right? That I got rid of for you. No, 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 no. Uh, no and by the way, he didn't kill her. That's not. I what was going to say. say. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not no, what he no I just told her. Put a head up. Pick. I, I told her Ice Pick from Broadway was going to come down and talk to her. Yeah, and <laughs> and she knew who he was. Yeah, I can't remember what. Who was that woman anyway? I don't remember her name, but she was very aggressive. She was calling the station. She was calling you uh, morning, noon, and night. And uh, you'd hand me the phone and say, "Get you know, get rid of her. And uh, 
So uh, I, I told her, I said, look, I said, I, I, I talked to Ice Pick and he's going to he's going to you know, he's going to talk to you if you continue to call. And then uh, I hear from Duke. Uh, he says, uh, I guess she knew Duke and uh, uh, she was very scared of Ice Pick which was just this fat Jewish guy that used to work the door over at the Condor. <laughs> well, anyway, the point is that I, you know, I know one woman who's cra- would be crazy enough to do this, you know, in spite of the fact that she pursued me every single time, you know. Uh, you, you know what the final result's going to be? Yeah, what? Uh, well, man, and then well, 10 years from now, we'll, we'll go out with nothing but robots. Well, my question, can I, let let me ask you a quick question before we get off here. Is this going to hurt Louis C.K.'s career? I mean, it's different. He's different than all these other people in these equations. Well, he's he's cutting edge. Well, he's cutting edge. He's a comic. And maybe. Was that a comedy routine he was testing out for those people? I don't know. I don't know. What was his reaction uh, so far in the news? Has he he made a statement? He he refuses to make a statement. Which is good, because you make a statement and you just dig a bigger hole for yourself. Well, he's, he was notorious for going independent, trying to sell his own tickets for his concerts, trying to fund his own stuff on the Internet, yeah. and not going through the big ticket master, the big... Uh, he was trying to avoid the man, you know? Yeah. But so, the, point, uh, the point is, my question is, because he's a comedian... And he's ex- and he is kind of an out there comedian, and you're expected to don't breathe so much, uh, uh, Mike, into the microphone. It's kind of disconcerting. Move the microphone down towards your chin. I think you'll be a lot better off that way, huh? He muted. Oh, he muted. Looks like oh, he muted. Okay, uh, uh, because you have the mic pretty close to your mouth. Anyway, uh, uh, it, because he's known as that. Will this thing for him fade? Will he be able to still get an audience? Will people mind seeing his work? And my answer is, as somebody who's been who's dealt with that community, probably not. You know, I I, I think it, it, this is the kind of accusation that will fade. Yeah. Well, uh, He's got some uh, was it, bad stuff in his movie too? What, was it the Amazon guy that came out and said? I didn't do it. I, I uh, you know, I'm going to go after uh, this lady. I'm going to sue her for defamation, uh, and and t- you know, totally denied. Was it the Amazon guy? I don't know. If it was the Amazon guy? I know that this guy Herkovic, Her- Herkovic did that. The guy from Shark Tank. What is that noise? Yeah. Okay, that was the guy, uh, the Shark Tank guy. Though. Yeah, yeah. He and he, that was a woman he went with for three years. So how do you distinguish rape? Yeah, from, from anything else that went sex. on in the relationship. Hormones. Yeah. You know, one <laughs> well, night you were a little drunk and you jumped on her and, you know, you did well, what you've been doing all along. I got a feeling that's that was the right way to handle it. Uh, oh, uh, the, right really way, in- the right way to handle it. Uh, who else did this? Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner is suing oh, as yeah. well. I got, I got a question for you, Alex. Hey, Tony, turn. Yeah, turn wait a minute, hold on a second. Tony, Tony, turn off your mic if you're going to go talk in the other room. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is happening with this Look show Look what you're tonight? dealing with. Huh? Yeah. You know, I'm, <laughs> this, is, this is just disastrous. What? Anyway, the point I made. Oh, with only three minutes to go, it's going to be a fill-free Friday. I'm going to be on a plane. Good. Uh, okay. Hooray! Yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, well, I guess yeah. I'll I guess I'll be praying for Larry and Dave to come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please don't. <laughs> we'll, we'll break a man without you, Phil. No, uh, I'm sure you will. Yeah. Hey, quick question for you, Alex. Yeah. Can Louis C.K. take his career overseas and still do a good and do pretty good? I think he can still do good here. I mean, I'll. I'll I, still, I think he might. I'll, yeah, still, he might I'll still watch his stuff. I think he does good, good work. I think he's funny. Uh, I think it's a different story altogether. To begin with, the only thing that's off-putting is that this guy's standing there naked, jerking off in front of a bunch of people. But uh, now, if it was a bunch of people, if there was a bunch of people, is there anyone else to coll- collaborate? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were corroborating it. Yeah, they co- corroborated it. But so what? You know. I mean, it's to his detriment that he took his clothes off and started jerking off. He didn't rape anybody. He didn't fondle the women. And they had the option to turn around and walk out. It's like, should we not have had JFK because of all the crap he did? All I'm saying is it's not as terrible a thing 
it's not as terrible as uh, the uh, uh, as the uh, I pushed the wrong song. Uh, Weinstein uh, thing. It's not as terrible as the other stuff, okay? And because he's a comedian and expected to be off the wall anyway, it's kind of still in character. Uh, listen, I got to go here. Thanks to Phil. You won't be here tomorrow night, so you're all free to call. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mike, thank you. Thank you. Patrick, I really thank you. Jeff, I love having you here. Tim, as usual, great. And, uh, and, and, uh, 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 uh <laughs> Mo, uh, Larry, Larry and Curly, Dave. Anthony, and Larry and Anthony, Dave. Tony, Come back. thank you so much, except for when you went out of the room and we're talking to somebody in the other room. You know, be sure to mute your mic if you go somewhere else, okay? Anyway, I got to go. Everybody, give it a big wave goodbye so they can say goodbye to you. Goodbye, guys. And that's our citizen panel for tonight. Yeah, that's all she wrote for the citizens panel. Let me just to get rid of them. Um... Uh, let me see here. Let me also get myself offline on the phone so the next show can use them. And uh, let me say to you that uh, Jack and Amy are next with the uh, intersection. And then at um, 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, it's uh, Connections coming from Florida. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.